Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Europa Universalis 4 Emperor Expansion. That's right, the 1.30 Mega Patch and Emperor Expansion, the by far biggest, apparently, that has come out for possibly any Paradox game ever. It's got like twice as many lines in the, uh, the uh, changelog than even CK2's Holy Fury, for example. Um, it is coming. It's, uh, it's gonna be out in a few days after you guys see this, but this weekend there is a huge event. It is gonna be, I think they're calling it the Creator Coliseum. It's gonna be about 30-ish people in a giant multiplayer game. Some people from Paradox and a bunch of your favorite content creators from YouTube and Twitch and including some, uh, web comics. Um... I'm going to be playing a Savoy. You can check the link down below for information about times for your particular time zones, as well as a list of everyone who is playing. Now, I get invited to these sorts of multiplayer events all the time, um, whether we're talking about Paradox games or Civ or anything like that, and I almost always turn them down, not because I don't think they'd be fun. In fact, I suspect they're incredibly fun, but because I actually physically get ill. I actually get panic attacks um, at the idea. I, um... For example, every week uh, on Tuesdays, I get together with my buddies and we play either D Dungeons and Dragons or, increasingly often, board games. And there are certain board games I do not let myself play. There's board games I own. They're fantastic, high-quality board games. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I don't let myself play them because I don't like who I become when I play them. Um, there's a there's a certain competitive streak that can come out that is I don't think I don't think appropriate and I, you know and I don't like who I become when that happens, uh, and so I avoid putting myself in those situations and I'm I'm concerned that what'll end up being here is I might I might start to get salty about stuff and I don't want to do that but then it means if you're not going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to get so hyper competitive and then risk being salty it probably means you're not playing in a cutthroat way and sometimes for games like this. That is not a good thing because, you know, people are playing fairly competitive. Now, I've been told by the organizers, nah, it's going to be more chill, more casual. It's going to be lots of learning new features. Yeah, we'll see. So, my plan is to play very diplomatically and very tall. I'm going to be playing as Savoy over here. I thought it would be an interesting pick because it's not too big. It's sort of on the edge of things. Uh, if I need to, maybe I can F off to, you know, take some territory. Like, I'll, I don't know, I'll take an island or... Or, or, you know, something over here and just, like, leave Europe if, if need be. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. In fact, what I'm hoping is um, that maybe the, the some of the countries down here... Okay, let's talk about my geography. Um, this province here, Geneva, is one of my vassals, as is uh, Montferrato over here. Um, and uh, Provence, Saluzzo, Genoa, Milan, none of those are player countries. France is, Burgundy is, Switzerland is, the Papal States over here are those, those are all my closest neighbors um i guess austria is pretty close too but you know i'm going to be a loyal member of the the empire so i'm hoping that austria is you know a chillin on my side about things um so we, we do have some neighbors including some very scary ones over here who um if rumor is to be believed it sounds like these guys are going to be buddy buddy it sounds like france and burgundy are going to have an alliance yeah i'm pretty scared too to be honest um my hope is that I can grab a tiny bit of territory from some of the AIs over here um, in the Genoan trade node, improve my financial situation a bit with both, you know, national taxes and trade, and then really focus on sort of the trade and growing tall kind of aspect. Because, like, when I'm playing single player, right, uh, you kind of want to beat up the AI, you want to be, you know, have the biggest name there is, you want to go through all your missions, and a lot of times the missions are fairly aggressive. For example, this one is, you know, kick the shit out of Switzerland, kick the shit out of Burgundy, kick the shit out of France. Yeah, okay. Oh, it sounds amazing in single player. I'm not interested in pursuing this tree at all. What I want to do is grow tall and probably spend some some points, I don't know, on internal development or something like that. If any of you guys have advice for playing tall, please let me know. In fact, not just in the comments today, but I'm hoping you come out to the live stream, because it will be live streamed both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's one hour later than the normal starting time of my Saturday stream. Uh, again, all the information down in the description box of what the times are as well as who's playing. So I hope you guys are going to come out. Give me some advice that's good for the sort of multiplayer context, but also like, what is it like to grow tall? How do you get powerful without expanding wide, for example? Um, and yeah, so hopefully get a little bit of territory here, get some tax base and trade power, focus a lot on trade, and then see, it's going to be a little tricky to do like, colonial nation stuff because 
um, we have to go all the way out through the Straits of Gibraltar and then down over here. So in the meantime, you know, Castile and Portugal will typically have grabbed a bunch of stuff, but they mean they can only, you know, settle so many things at once. Maybe we can grab a few things, help with some trade steering. Maybe we can pick up some land in, in India at some point, you know, by buying it uh, and something like that. My hope is to bring, you know, all the spices and silk from mysterious Orient to, to Europe for, you know, the, the pleasure of all. Um, you know, make some money on the side and then use that money to have fun playing the game as sort of a, a bit of a, a bit of a side player, but play very diplomatically. And as it turns out, Savoy is really meant to be uh, thematically works really well as a diplomatic power. For example, our traditions over here improve relations plus 25 percent plus one diplomatic relations. So we have more alliances than normal. We uh, we have a starting cap of five. Two of them are used up because we do have two vassals, right? Geneva and Montferrat over here. We may get an event early on from Geneva to want to make a march. Uh, we give them Vado and Valles over here and then turn Geneva into a march, which means we won't be able to integrate them, but they will get a substantial boost to their military power. Um, and if I'm worried about Switzerland, that would probably be a very strong move. Bit of a buffer with someone who can build up a bigger military than it could otherwise. Um, but I think in an ideal world, I think I would prefer to just integrate them because I think uh, that would be better for economy overall. And as a bonus, there's in fact a mission to integrate Geneva. Now, this mission's not terribly helpful. All it does is it gives me a bunch of claims on a bunch of stuff that I'm not really interested in pursuing. And then down from here, it's just, you know, eat Switzerland, eat Burgundy, eat France again, which I'm not interested in. And the reward for all these is just permanent claims. Well, if I get down to conquering Burgundy, then, oh, I get 50 um, admin power and 20 years of a slight military boost. Like, who, who gives a crap? And we're not even going to think about France. That's not even uh, close to that. Um, I do have a really interesting mission in here. So strength in numbers is being allied to someone who's nice and strong. All bases covered um, is really funky. The way this is, it's a little hard to tell from the reading here. But basically, what I have to do is I have to be allied to two people who rival each other. So I have to ally two rivals and have them both like me, uh, which is really cool. Now, against with the AI, it can be kind of tricky to do that because uh, a lot of times someone won't ally you if you're allied to their rival, um, although it is, of course, possible. But it's really interesting with humans because, of course, they can always say yes. But I've had to, like, tell people, by the way, I have this mission. If I'm allied to you and then you see that I'm allied to your rival, I'm not being a sneaky sneak. I just want to try to complete this mission. Um, in fact, it's quite bad for me to ally, be allied to two people who are rivals and might go to war because no matter who declares war on who, I'll get an immediate call to arms to be a defender. And I might not want to be the defender for one over the other, right? So it's actually a very scary proposition, uh, but we'll try to do it to complete the mission because it'll be kind of fun. Um, it's got a pretty nice reward for a little bit of, um, you know, uh, extra diplo skill and whatnot, which is nifty do. I like that a lot. And then Alpine Purification is just build some forts. Uh, and then military self-reliance is just have some troops. Yeah, 100 military power is pretty nice. So you can see, like, these two are going to be easy mode. As long as I can get through all bases covered without upsetting people, it's going to be great fun. Uh, so, basically, if you have played multiplayer games before, please make sure to come out to the stream. Well, leave comments as well. Please make sure to come out to the stream, because I'll need some advice. Um, if, you, uh, if you've played Tall, like a small Tall Nation, and you've got some advice about managing an economy in a small nation like that, please let me know. Um, normally, you know, against the AI, you tend to be kind of conquesty and, and kick people's butt and stuff. So you're spending a lot of admin power, for example, coring. You might be spending a lot of military power, um, pushing down some rebellions from time to time, that sort of thing. But we may not need to do any of that. So I'm hoping that the extra power can, in fact, be converted into just more development uh, and do that. There's one of, one of the players in the uh, Paradox multiplayer games is always trying to make, like, the highest development province or things. I, that's not really what we're going to go for. We will see. Um, at some point, we will... I think it might be when we complete um, Unify PMO over here, maybe, which is Montferrat, which I already have, and then Saluzzo, which I'll need to get. Um, I think if we grab this and complete this, it does give us a boost in Torino, but I think it'll give us an event to move our capital to Torino, which sounds great because that's going to put our capital in the Genoan trade node. I mean, I could just move my, my trade port over here, but I have to spend 200 Diplo power. So I'm hoping to do that. And then, yeah, I'll basically, you know, just try to get a little bit of stuff in Genoa over here. I am concerned about France and Burgundy, who might have an alliance. I'm really concerned about the Papal States, because they've made certain comments that imply a certain amount of intended aggression and conquest of all of Italy. And the fact is, he's surrounded by nothing but AIs, so he's going to be able to blob like crazy. And I think that's going to be a potential source of conflict with a lot of people. I intend 
to be a good and proper Catholic. I mean, if nothing else, if you look over here, so my idea is right. I looked over here. I also meant to look here, like repel the French, just fort defense, papal influence here, right? Why would I want to lose papal influence? Um, mercenary maintenance. We got missionary strength over here, cheaper ideas, more trade power, more legitimacy. And when we finish everything, tax modifier, there's really nothing in here that's militaristic other than literally defensive forts and then cheaper mercenaries, right? We don't have, uh, we're not going to be sitting around with boosts to, to morale or to discipline or anything like that. And so I really want to like commit to the role playing that clearly Savoy wants to be a diplomatic force. And that's really what I'm going to want to play is, is to be that kind of person, um, to be, to be a buddy to people in these wars. I mean, at some point, of course, you're going to have the wars of, you know, Catholics versus Protestants and whatever. Um, and at some point I'll be allied. My goal, my dream goal would be if I never declare war on a player and I never have a player declare war on me, but instead I fight in player wars because other people who I'm allied with have declared on each other. And then, you know, I'll be a good loyal buddy to, to whoever gets declared on. While hopefully making tons of money through trade uh, or, or something to that effect. Um, and, you know, have a bit of a, of a global influence so that the fact that we don't have a ton of land over here will be will be good. So I'm, I'm eager to see what the tall experience feels like. And mostly, mostly I'm trying to avoid the massive, massive anxiety and panic attacks that I get at the prospect of being competitive in a multiplayer game. Uh, like, you know, hardcore try, try hard kind of competitive. I, think I might get rid of these boats early on just to save a little bit of money. Um, our capital fort here is right next to France, so I don't know about Mothball in that one. Uh, Mothball in Cuneo is not so bad, though, because it's not directly next to anyone. So, you know, it, we might be able to save a few bucks when we're not at war doing that. Um, I don't know if we can actually drop maintenance on our troops. Uh, if nothing else, we might want to maintain the maintenance just to do um, drilling, which um, I don't remember the specifics, but I believe the drill... I think you lose less drill from like reinforcements and things like that um, because on the stream they were talking about how like, oh, you, you get in two battles and lose all your drill bonus and, you know, they wanted to improve that. So I think that's going to be part of that. Um, if you've got advice for early game composition, I know there's a lot of back and forth of cavalry. They are very powerful, but they're a lot more expensive as well. Uh, and I'm interested to know, let me know in the comments what the current sort of meta is in terms of, you know, do you keep the cavalry? Do you get rid of it to save some money? Uh, generally speaking, bigger numbers win. Um... And the times when a smaller number wins will generally be because of terrain and that sort of thing, or leader pips. Um, I don't know how much of a game breaker cavalry is. It's been a long time since we've just played U4 as well. So um, a bit of a refresher in general would always be very, very, very handy. Um, you know, we've got the two merchants. We've got one collecting in Genoa because we need it because that's not where our trading port is. And then we'll probably send one to, uh, what are all the imports from Genoa? Alexandria, how's the money there? Oh, 5.4. So probably send a... Oh, it's, it's out of range. I think actually only Ragusa and Tunis are in range early on. Well, I guess Valencia, but of course, um, the trade's already being steered towards Geneva because there's no other output over there. So unless I start putting ships there, it's not going to make much of a difference. So I guess it would be Ragusa because it's a little more valuable. We put a you know transfer trade power over there. I mean, I guess I could collect more trade in Champagne as well, but because um, that's where I'm auto-collecting trade. But... We got 7% trade power there. A whole two in the Genoan trade node. Ooh, crazy sauce. So yeah, not, not the greatest economy early on. 1.1 right now because we're not um we're not maintaining this fort. So I think like we're barely making a gold. I think I think this is what gold a month, right? Uh no, it is a gold a month, but we're still paying half. Anyway, not a ton of money. And then of course, if we want to bring our troops up to the force limit, which is often what you do early on, well, hey, there goes all my money. And then increase maintenance. So uh, if you've got suggestions for opening moves, that would be great. Uh, my plan is probably immediately to start building a spy network in Saluzzo, Um, because I don't start with any claims. In fact, annoyingly, I start with zero claims anywhere. Like, if you compare to um, to Switzerland, they... Wait, they don't get the claims? I thought they did. I don't know. Maybe they must get an event. They, mu they get an event or something to get um, ores or claims... Um, on some land over here. Maybe it's a mission that I'm, I'm pretty sure there's something of that nature uh, that gets over there. But um, yeah. So, all right, we can start with anything. So we'd, we'd have to fabricate from the start and grabbing salute. So it's important for a mission. And I don't think anyone's going to care. I think it would be a pretty jerk ass move to, to block that. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, fuck, I'm so fucking nervous. I almost changed my mind again today. And just, like, wrote an email and said, listen, sorry, I can't do this. Oh, I'm so stressed out, you guys. Um, other suggestions in chat. Drinking games. Because at least then, you know, 
you can blame it on something else. I believe what they're going to do, by the way, if anyone gets eliminated, I think they're just going to, you're just going to come back in as a nation outside of Europe. So, you know, I guess potentially take your pick. Maybe you'll be a native. Maybe you'll be someone uh, in, uh, I don't know, one of the island nations over here. I mean, I don't know what they mean. Maybe they mean you'll come back as a Mamlux. I think they mean fairly far away. Um, so you can keep playing, but you're not going to be able to, you know, immediately go in and execute revenge on whoever killed you, for example, because that would be kind of kind of cheap, perhaps. But uh, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm just hoping that everyone I mean, I want, you know, everyone to, to work hard to do the best they can. But I'm hoping it's not so cutthroat that I feel like the only way to to have like a um, uh, like balanced time. No, there's there's a word I'm looking for but I'm not finding it. But yeah, a sort of balanced experience is to also become cutthroat. I'm, I'm hoping that there's there's room for being a little bit more more chill. And I want to spend, I'm, I'm hoping that the country is like a, a easy, small enough and easy enough to manage, especially if I'm not planning a million offensive wars. I'm hoping to do a lot of watching, like almost be an observer or commentator while still being in the game. That's actually, that's what I should have started with um, talking about. That's really what I'm hoping gets pulled off here. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly going to be eager to help out with people. If people are, are, you know, want some backing to take on some of the AIs, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. And especially if we can get, you know, in exchange for like like the Pope here, like, yeah, you want to, you know, you want to go crazy nuts in in southern Italy or even, you know, parts of northern Italy, that's fine. But hey, can I get uh, can I get what is this Albenga and uh, Genoa? Hey, maybe we can work something out. That That's where I'm sort of hoping, you know, let me help you help me too. Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Or I'll see you in a few hours after uh, this goes live. Twitch.tv slash Quail18.